Let's take a little time today to dive into fluvoxamine for the management of COVID-19. This was prompted by a listener question. Fluvoxamine has been around for a long time. It is a cheap, readily available SSRI with some anti-inflammatory properties, some antiviral properties, and it started gaining a little notice a couple months back. First published study, about 150 patients, showing some benefit. Now we have the TOGETHER trial published in The Lancet on the 27th of October. This is a much larger study, about 1,500 patients. Let's see what they found. So they basically looked at treating patients with fluvoxamine or placebo, and what they were looking at was patients coming into the hospital, now can we send them home? So their primary outcome was hospitalization or stay in the emergency department for more than six hours. We'll come back to that in a minute. What they found was that with fluvoxamine, there was a lower risk of that primary outcome. It was about 10.5% in the fluvoxamine arm, almost 15% in the group that got placebo, giving a number needed to treat of around 24, which looks pretty good for a cheap and readily available drug. All of the patients that were included in this study, and again, there were about 1,500 total, were a little bit higher risk, so they had some comorbid conditions, and they had to be presenting within five days of symptom onset. That's a tricky one. Mel talked about this recently. It's hard to get in that five-day window. Uh, molipinavir and the new drug coming out from Pfizer both require treatment within just a couple of days of onset of symptoms. You see the same thing here with fluvoxamine. But the number needed to treat of 24 for a cheap, readily available drug sounds pretty good. There are, though, some limitations here. When we look at the nitty-gritty of the data, there's no decrease in hospitalizations. So we split that primary outcome. The only reduction was really in the ED stays greater than six hours. That's a weird endpoint. I don't really care if the patient stays in the emergency department more than six hours or less than six hours. I just want them to go home. The authors have said that they use that as a surrogate for observation because their hospitals were full. I think it's a little bit wishy-washy. And in fact, when you look at the original study design, the original primary outcome was hospitalizations or ED observation for more than 12 hours. And then they changed that. That always raises a little bit of suspicion. It's the one piece of methodology here that I question because otherwise this is a very well put together study. But that primary outcome, no reduction in hospitalizations, a reduction just in the weights or the stays over six hours. They again changed that primary endpoint. More patients stopped their fluvoxamine than placebo, which kind of hints that maybe there were some side effects that didn't get teased out in the paper. And this was only in unvaccinated patients. So what I would say is that fluvoxamine may play a role in decreasing uh, ED length of stay of more than six hours. So maybe it's gonna reduce your observation stays, but only in unvaccinated populations. So this is why I don't think there's been a lot of excitement about fluvoxamine. And I think that that lack of excitement is pretty justified. So there's your update on fluvoxamine. Hopefully that's helpful.